السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته wherever you are whenever you are in your zone with this morning and the evening or afternoon and may Allah bless you and reward you in this life and in the life to come and make your life fruitful and make your family prosperous and give you good health good knowledge and 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 may Allah abundance you with his shower of blessing inshallah I have been traveling for the last six weeks, which uh, alhamdulillah visited about six countries between Pakistan, Pakistan, Kashmir, and uh, Africa, Cameroon, Central African Republic, then Middle East, uh, Qatar, uh, uh, Kuwait, and Iraq. And back today to be with you in this very important topic, which called 10 reasons for successful social work and successful social worker. Yesterday, or the day before yesterday, yesterday was a day of Human Rights Day of the United Nations. And when we look at the record of human rights in globally, we find that we are not near to any level who can protect human beings in different parts of the world, whether it's in Syria, it's in Yemen, it's in South Sudan, it's in the Democratic Republic of Congo, it's in uh, Central African Republic, it's in uh, Myanmar, or Rohingya, everywhere, Latin America, and West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, and others. So, I was just celebrating a topic which we do not implement it because of this struggle of power between the superpowers and the small nations who are struggling to get their independence and to stop fighting the corruption in their homeland. Maybe a few weeks ago it was the International Day of Volunteering. We have to change volunteers to become community leaders not just a day of volunteering, painting walls, or distributing food, or water. No, they have to use the volunteer as an asset and invest in him or her to become a community leader. Today I thank my team again, which you can look at the names, Ahmed Al-Heet, Ahmed Al-Sheikh, and uh, Abdul Rahman Nahas, and Mahad Sayyid for all the help they give me. 10 reasons for successful social work and successful social workers. I am honoring myself by standing next to my friend, my colleague, my brother, uh, Liwari, whom I met in uh, a place called uh, Gat, Gat, Barut, Gat Baruth, Landi, uh, UC, uh, Mori, District, Shaghi, Balochistan, Pakistan. This gentleman, my brother, <coughs> he had a dream. That's why I'm honoring myself to stand next to him. Plus, I'd be honored to make this talk for his respect, credibility, and dignity, because he's a community worker in the middle of the desert. You can see this is his cafe, as you can say. And this is some of the cups here, coffee, tea, and others. And he makes coffee for people, passengers in this area, in the middle of the desert in Balochistan, in Shaggy area. And if he's not in the cafe, as you can see, they call it in, in Balochistan hotel. And if he's not there, okay, he leaves his uh, uh, coat for people to come and help themselves and make their own coffee and tea and put whatever they can put in the pocket of his uh, jacket. His dream was to see me before he died. This gentleman, my brother, I have no broad relation with him. I have no vested interest in his business or in my business, whatever it is. No connection whatsoever. And this is what we call the clean heart of a man that he's dreaming and praying for somebody he does not know. This could be an individual that you help somewhere in your work, in your social work, in your community work, in your humanitarian work, and he or she is praying for you, 
for your family, for your health, for your wealth, for your education, for your children, for your life. These are the people that you need to count on them to build you, to build your community, and to build and reinvigorate your moral system. So my talk today is for him, inshallah, in an honor to be with him, standing next to him, because I have no relationship with him, but he has a clean heart and he wants to be with me, to see me before I die or before he dies. Our talk today is about 10 reasons for successful social work and successful social worker. First of this reason is the clean heart. Clean heart. Salamat sadr. To have a clean heart, you have to look at the diseases which could affect my heart and your heart. And I'll mention them because this is the first step of struggle inside ourselves to enable us to become community worker, to become social worker, to become development worker, to become political workers, or political activists, to become humanitarian worker, and so on, so on, so Before I talk about the diseases, you know why I'm saying this? Because our sector is infested with a lot of parasites, infiltrating it. A lot of germs infiltrating it. A lot of ignorant people who are fooling us. A lot of liars and hypocrites who are actually twisting the facts and figures for different reasons. That's why I'm taking a step back with all of us today to look at myself and look at ourselves. How can we build our moral system, our morality, before starting working with the, in the social field, humanitarian field, political field, any public field, any public address. Because many, 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 many ignorant people now are taking the lead of different sectors in our life. But let me talk with you about the diseases which affect hearts before we start talking about the, the inverted or the upside pyramid. Envy is one. Jaundice. Grudge. To have the grudge feeling toward somebody. Unfaithfulness. Backbiting. Defamation. Lying. Hypocrisy. Deceitfulness. Deceiving. Derogatory. Secret enmity. Oh. It's inside me. Oh, I hate you. Okay, hatred. Excessive flattering to your president, to your king, to your queen, to your minister, to your prince, to your sheikh and others. Pride. Proud of myself. Lordness. Lordness. Arrogance. And the last, but the worst, is making things bad between people. These are some of the diseases affecting the heart and we need to clear it to have a sound and a clean and a clear heart. Say them again. Envy, jaundice, grudging, feeling, unfaithfulness, backbiting, defamation, lying, hypocrisy, deceitfulness, deceiving, derogatory, feeling, secret enmity, hatred, excessive flattering to your boss, pride, lordlessness, lord, lordliness, Arrogance and making things bad between people. You want to go to the community? You want to work in this public domain? This is the first step. This is the first step. And this is the first step. It's not how excellent is your education. It's not how eloquent is your speech. It's not how clever you are when you deliver something. No, it's how good when you control, control your heart. From inside. It's how good when you, as a girl or a boy or a man or a woman, control their diseases and clear this. 
This is actually what the Prophet said. Inside the body, there's a small piece of like an organ or a meat. Like, if it's good, the whole body will be good. If it's bad, the whole body will be bad in its action. Inside such a piece of flesh is a black spot. And this was the struggle happening at the time of the company of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophets themselves as well, and the messengers of God, as well as the good uh, disciples of Jesus, Moses, and others, to struggle against their illnesses, the illnesses in their hearts. It's number one. Okay? Number two, our intention. Our intention. The word excellence has to be everywhere, has to be cross-cutting. Whenever we do anything, we have to excel in doing it, including our intention from the very beginning. An excellence of intention to help the community, to help poor families, to help widows, to help orphans, to help destitute, to help uneducated, to help children. To do any community work, we have to excel in our intention before excelling in our action. To excel in our intention before excelling in our action. Okay, this is number two. Or number one. Number two, sincerity of intention. What are we doing this for? Am I sincere in doing it for Allah? For my Lord? For myself? for my family, for my political party, for my Islamic group or Christian group or Jewish group or Buddhist group, for my leaders, for my sheikh, for my amir, for my president, for my minister, for my boss. What is my intention? Excellence and sincerity of intention. The intention has to go through all this difficulty to aim to please the Creator who gave me everything and created me from nothing. I was dust and I'll become dust later on. So, to have this kind of intention and every action I am doing or you are doing have to have an intention. Every action has to have an intention. Uh, number three is excellence of performance. I'm a teacher. I have to finish the uh, syllabus or the program or the uh, subject. I have to consume and use every minute to enable the children to understand me. And if they don't, I stay behind to help them. This is excellent. I am a farmer. I am a worker in a factory. I am a salesman. I don't mix water with wheat to make it heavier. I don't inject the watermelon or the melon with water or with other liquid to make it heavy. I don't put something on the scale Huh? to weigh less, to put less material inside the sack when I weigh for you, when I sell you. Those who deceive us are not a part of us. So this is, the second one is excellence of performance. I'm an electrician. I excel in putting the wires. I am a, I am a mechanic. I excel when I repair the, 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 the car or, or the machine. <coughs> I am a plumber. Extending these tubes, water tubes, to go from A to B to C to D, I have to excel in it. Okay? This is excellence of performance. Humanity and the altruism. And this was the character of all the prophets and messengers of God. They behave humility, they behave altruism, they behave modesty, they do not act, they do not perform, they really are humble, 
modest, lowering their down their credibility to the ground to be with the poorest of the poor, the lowest of the low in their community and their society. It's not an act of performance. It's not a, 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 a kind of acting to show the poor and the community that you are humble. It comes from here. To go back to the first one, the sound and the clean heart, which will find all the heart diseases, the moral heart diseases inside it. Altruism and humility. It's for you, sister, daughter, or for you, sonny and brother and uncle. Loving the poor and needy. When I go to the poor and needy, I don't go to them because this is the job. I don't go to them because I want to take some photographs with them. I don't want to go to them because I'm going to take a per diem for extra hour or extra day or extra week to be with them. But I love being with them. I love mixing with them. I love listening to them. I love considering everything to they're saying to me. I love dreaming with them for them. I love planning for them with them. This is the love which you want each and every one to have when he or she goes to a poor widow's dwelling, whether it's a hut, whether it's a gotia, whether it's a tent, whether it's a shed. It might smell bad because you don't have water and don't have sanitation. But I have to change the bad smell into a good smell. To love being with them. Fulfilling the needs of the poor and the needy. Why I am there after I, after I managed my intention and my sincerity? Because I want to respond to your needs. I want to alleviate your poverty. We want to respond to your causes. We want to give you safety. We want to give you food. We want to give you a job. We want to give you a future. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu when Abdullah ibn Abbas was in the mosque in, in, in Medina, one day and he found somebody making a tikaf and standing up the whole night in the Ramadan. And he told him, I have heard the one who is lying in this place, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying, going out to fulfill the needs of your brothers and sisters is far more bitter than making atikaf in my mosque here in Medina for a month or more, depending on the narration. Going out to take the orphans and the widows and the displaced and bring the medicine for the sick and building the shelter for the poor and bring the food, creating the job for those people far more better than being in my mosque making atikaf. Because atikaf is for yourself, not for the community. But going out to fulfill the needs of the needy is for the community. So you become a community builder. Community organizers, community leaders, community protectors. So I talk about clear and sound heart, excellence of intention, sincerity of intention, excellence of performance, humility and altruism, loving the poor and the needy, and fulfilling the needs of the poor and the needy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number, number seven, when we are a group in an organization, we have to work as a team. As I mentioned it earlier on in the Arabic speech, if you are the best player like Messi, like Ronaldo, like Mohammed Salah, like uh, who else uh, we can say, uh, uh, very talented individual, 
you don't go and play with yourself to score the goal from this side to this side. You have to work as a team in a factory, in an organization, in an institution, in a government, in society, in organization. You have to, have to work as a team. We have to show the caring to one another because we want with the team to achieve what's good for our community. It doesn't matter whose name will be written, but what matters that we achieve our goals and objectives. This is what we want. This is what we want if we conquer the first 18 disease in our heart, which I mentioned earlier on, and have a clear and a clean and sound heart. Okay, to work as a team, to care. If somebody is missing, we have to call his wife or her husband to talk about what, what's wrong with her, why she's not here today, she's not feeling well, we'll go and visit. We we'll care about my opinion and their opinion. And our opinion. This is how to work as a team and build partnership with others. Number eight is if we have management, leadership, we have to follow it. We can discuss everything and anything before we take the decision. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنْ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّرْ عَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعَفْ عَنْهُمْ وَشَوْرُهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ وَإِذَا عَزَمْتْ فَتَوَكَّرْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Okay. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ it is what we want. Once that the leadership took a decision, we have to follow such a decision. Even such a decision is not my decision or your decision. It becomes our decision. We cannot have a team which somebody going this way, somebody going this way, somebody going this way, and somebody going this way. We'll never succeed. No way. No way. No way. No way, no way, no way. Once we build a team, we have to have a leadership and we'll discuss everything. Then after that, we follow the decision to implement it to serve our community and our society. Number nine, the process of learning is a never-ending story. Learning in different fields and in my opinion, learning have got two different fields in our social, humanitarian, political, and other work. One side of the learning is when you increase the morality of your moral system through learning the religion, the ethics, the etiquettes, the value, the culture, the history of the people, and the morality of the people that you are supporting. And the morality of morality you need to clean my heart and your heart and our hearts. This is one side of learning. The second learning is the learning process which will lead us to and enable us to build a society. Geography, water, metallurgy, mathematics, scientific knowledge, astronomy, agriculture, uh, milk product, uh, different kind of industrial product, and so on. So with these two things, is a never-ending story. We learn to keep, to keep building our morality and nurturing, nurturing our moral system on one side, and on the other side, we keep learning to enable us to build a community based on science and technology. We cannot excel in one and ignore others. Because if I can't swim, my memorization of Quran might not save me in the middle of the ocean. The people who will be able to be saved in the middle of the ocean are the people who can swim. Okay? If I can't run, I will never win the race of the 100 meter, or 200 meter, or 500 meter, no matter how many hadith, or ayah, or story about Jesus, I can narrate to people. This is a different story. If I'm ignorant, 
I cannot lead the community. Because knowledge is one of the basic facts of leadership, of quality of the leadership of community. Whether knowledge in community leadership or knowledge in the political atmosphere, social atmosphere and other atmosphere. So you have to marry both of them together. Not to do one and say ignore science and technology. Why? We need to complement the two things together. The moral system, morality, and moral scientific knowledge, as well as the technology and science as well, to enable us to protect our society, our community, our country, and build our country and society and community and civilization. The last one, material support. That's why I bought this inverted or converted uh, pyramid, because for me, the pinnacle is not here. The pinnacle is there, or the clean heart. And this is, this is a message for all the people who are standing in the public sphere to try to respond to the needs of the most vulnerable people. We we'll go by the heart first, the intention, the sincerity, the performance, the humility and the altruism, loving the poor and the needy, fulfilling the needs of the poor and needy, good organization and management and building partnership, following the management strategy and leadership, learning the different subjects as well as moral, as a materialistic work. So don't be deceived, my sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, by people who just had a good degree, but they might have corrupt moral system. An excellent experience on paper, but bad moral system. We don't want to have those corrupt people to lead our society. Some of them, we might use them temporarily because we have, he is the only or she might be the only expert in this field. But we have to build the character of the people who have the moral system other than the scientific knowledge and others. To conclude, we have to honor my friend at the very beginning, which I put his... Uh, Photograph, an honor for me standing next to him. Then to talk about the diseases of the heart, which I mentioned before, but I make a reminder for all of us. Okay, envy, to fight all these illnesses, envy, jaunts, grudge feeling, unfaithfulness, backbiting, defamation, lying, hypocrisy, deceitfulness, deceiving, derogatory feeling, Secret enmity, hatred, excessive flattering, pride, uh, lordliness, lordly, lordly, lordliness, uh, arrogance, lo uh, lordliness or, or vanity, arrogance, and making things bad between people. Okay, excellence of intention, sincerity of intention, excellence of performance, humility and altruism, loving the poor and needy, fulfilling the needs of the poor and needy, good organization and management and building partnership, following management, strategy and leadership, learning different subjects and knowledge, material support, and so on, so on, so on. So on. When we follow these 10 principles or 10 steps, we'll be able to have the most successful social work and becoming the most successful social workers, humanitarian worker, political worker, political activist, and so on, so on, so on. For in the public domain, we'll go back to the drawing board. And this is a drawing board after conquering the diseases, the moral sicknesses of the heart, or the immoral, immoral sicknesses of the heart. Thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And I'll see you again in another talk uh, before the end of the year, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.